Well, it may be Earth Day, but here at CBS News, we are celebrating Earth 365. Humans involved in the fight against climate change owe a huge debt of gratitude to the oceans and the billions of creatures that call them home. Water absorbs most of our planet's heat, but marine life is key to keeping a lot of our carbon out of the atmosphere. Without this ocean ecosystem, scientists say the planet would have overheated already. Ben Tracy joined a science mission learning more about the mysterious deep sea creatures doing their part to protect the planet. As the sun rises along the California coast, we head out into Monterey Bay with researchers from the area's world famous aquarium. What are you guys doing out here today? What is the mission? So we are looking for deep sea animals and animals that are really far from the surface, but also really far from the bottom. Tommy Knowles is the senior aquarist. We watched as the team deployed this underwater robot to search for elusive creatures in what's known as the midwater of the deep sea. Compared to some of the marine creatures we're all familiar with, the sharks, the dolphins, those sorts of things, how do these compare? So the animals that we're looking for in the midwater are a little bit more of the squishy, weirder looking animals. They are simply otherworldly, floating in the dark in what's known as the oxygen minimum zone, about 3,000 feet below the surface. The robot travels through so-called marine snow, mainly fish scales, whale poop, and a lot of microplastics from humans. In these depths, the researchers have found this vampire squid, rare brightly colored jellyfish, and also this, a barrel-eyed fish with a transparent domed head revealing upward facing eyes. It's been seen by humans less than 10 times. It looks like outer space down there and a lot of these things look like aliens. Right, well, to be honest, they are the earthlings and we're the aliens that are coming down with our bright lights <laughs> to, to look in on them. That is amazing looking, that red color. They led us into the ship's control room where they remotely operate the underwater robot. It is really cool looking. Yeah, it's stunning. Just then they found this, a jellyfish so rare it doesn't even have a name. For now, they just call it Red X. And so now we wait for it to show up in uh, collection tube number one. They extend the robot's arm and using suction capture the creature in this container. Yeah, today we've had a few good hits, so hopefully that continues. It did. They also collected this red paper lantern jellyfish and another with a name that would make Dr. Seuss jealous, the Bloody Belly Comb Jelly. And he's in there. <laughs> nice work. With the rover back on deck, the team rushes to transport their finds into larger jars inside this makeshift lab. That is so cool. <laughs> and it comes with it. Wow. These underwater discoveries are now the stars of a new exhibit at the Monterey Bay Aquarium called Into the Deep. It took nearly five years to design and build this elaborate life support system of pipes, pumps, and filters to replicate the deep sea environment. This exhibition is the first one in the United States, and we think the world of this magnitude. Beth Redmond Jones is in charge of the aquarium's exhibits. This is an opportunity for visitors to see animals that no one has ever seen before. But the science behind this display is about much more than that. We should really call our planet ocean, not Earth, because two thirds of the planet's covered by water. Kelly Benoit Bird is the senior scientist at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, or IMBARI. How crucial is the ocean when it comes to this mitigation of climate change? Yeah, the ocean has taken up more than 90% of the heat produced by global warming. And every year it sequesters about 25% of the carbon dioxide that we emit into the atmosphere from the burning of fossil fuels. So the ocean provides critical life support. Scientists are now studying the role deep sea creatures play as millions of them rise from the depths at night to feed in the cover of darkness. This is the largest migration on the planet. And every night at sunset, they come up to the surface and then they migrate back down again at sunrise. If you were to make that move, it'd be the equivalent of a 10K to get your breakfast and then another 10K before you went to bed. I'm far too lazy for that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but what they're doing is no joke. By feeding on plants and marine animals near the surface, scientists now think they might be responsible for sequestering up to half of the carbon dioxide 
absorbed by the ocean. And that provides a sort of biological conveyor belt. Only when the carbon dioxide that's taken up by plant life gets into the deep sea does it stay there and stay out of the atmosphere. Of course, that comes with a cost. Our oceans are becoming more acidic and rapidly warming. That's making storms stronger and more deadly and could also impact the ocean life now working overtime to protect our planet. So we're trying to understand exactly how much of a role this migration plays and what affects it. But we already know enough to be thankful to these amazing creatures that dwell in the deep. For CBS Mornings, I'm Ben Tracy in Monterey Bay, California. Amazing. I know, incredible, incredible. Yeah. Out of sight, no longer out of mind. There it is. Ben Tracy's got some great assignments. I know. All the people he talks to as well clearly love their love job. Yes. Yeah, it's like an advertisement for science and earth education. Well, and you hope that maybe it inspires other people to take a look at what they're doing. Yeah, I'm sure it will. And save the planet. Yeah, oh, that'd be That's nice. That's the too. bottom line. <laughs> that'd be good. Yeah, check that one off. Let's keep it.